Wow, isn't it amazing? Look at how beautiful this place is. I want to congratulate all of us for collectively taking care of what God has blessed us with. Listen, this facility all together, I think the project was 2.4 million. And I'm thankful that today we are a little above a million. Wow, what a reduction. That is because of the down payment. That is because of the payments we made. But more importantly, the R138 initiative that we have championed to be our own. Listen, and we're here again, 2024. The R138 initiative is a Alive. There are five levels in which you can partner. So there's something for everyone to be a part. Every gift, every level is important. Listen, the first level is the partner level, 250. Then there's the greater partner, 500. Catalyst, 1,000, okay? Greater catalyst, 2,500. Super catalyst, 5,000. I want you to find your place. If you have not already, continue to give so we can burn the mortgage on this beautiful place owing no man nothing but to love them. Help me celebrate these people who have already acted in faith in the year of the Lord's help, claiming victory and defeat over debt. Be blessed. Grace and peace, Cathedral family. I am BJ Hesman. I am a R138 partner giver. With the Lord's help, debt shall be defeated in my house and in God's house. Praise God. Coming in July is the Momentum Pastors and Leadership Conference, July 17th through the 19th at 7 p.m. at Freedom Rock Cathedral, featuring musical guest J. Todd of J. Todd Ministries in Newark, New Jersey. Night services are open to the public. The intensives will be held at Meridian Community College's Workforce Development. And you can register for the intensives at formomentum.org. This is what's happening at The Rock. Grace and peace, Freedom family and friends. These are your weekly announcements. I Rock Youth Ministry. We need all parents to scan the QR code on the screen to get the parent list updated. And there is still time to sign your kids up for the Pine Lake Fellowship Camp. The deposit is $60. Freedom will match your deposit and $100 will be applied from fundraising until funds run out. You can sign your kids up at pinelakecamp.com. Call Kelly Butler at the number on your screen if you have any questions. Senior Care Connection Point will be held this Wednesday, June 6th at 545 in the Sanctuary. All members aged 65 and older are invited to attend. Once again, the Senior Care Connection Point will be held this Wednesday at 545 in the Sanctuary. And all members ages 65 and older are invited to attend. Get ready for Overseer Kaiser Cole's conference, Unleashed. This conference will be held on June 14th at 7 p.m. at New Vision Church in DeKalb, Mississippi. Our very own minister, Deanna Fox, will be the guest psalmist for the evening. This event is free, but you still need to register at kaisercoleministries.org. Show your support and make your plans to be there. Baby dedications have resumed here at Freedom Rock, and if you desire to have your child dedicated, contact the church office. Mark your calendar for Freedom Rock's Rock Community Resource Center. Every third Saturday from 9 until noon, you will have access to food, toiletries, life essentials, and so much more. And there is no cost because it's free at Freedom. For the month of June, the third Saturday lands on June 15th, and we look forward to seeing you. Elder Betty Cole is the Outreach Director, and for more information, contact the number or email address on your screen. You can catch Bishop Hedgeman each weekday at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM for a motivational moment with Bishop LeBaron Hedgeman. It's the moment where positive vibes and voice prospers both decisions and the day. So don't miss out on your motivational moment weekdays at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM. 
Happy birthday to Mrs. Tiana McNeil. Tiana recently celebrated her birthday this past Thursday, May 30th. So happy birthday to you, Tiana, from all of us at Freedom Rock Cathedral. Happy anniversary to John and Linda Cheney. Today, the Cheneys are celebrating 50 years of marriage. Happy anniversary to you both, and we know that there will be many more anniversaries to celebrate. Congratulations to Kaiserion Farrell. Kaiserion and VNB Entertainment advanced to the Magnolia Youth Baseball Association playoffs. Congratulations, Kaiserion. Congratulations to Christopher Henderson. Christopher graduated from Daycare First Step Learning with high honors and he also won a scholarship from the school. He will be attending Pre-K Academy in August. Congratulations, Christopher. Congratulations to Javion Jordan. Javion was recently promoted to the ninth grade and is heading to Meridian High School. Congratulations, Javion. Congratulations to Javarius Bryant. Javarius received the Citizenship Award, was on the honor roll, and he also passed his third grade test. Congratulations, Javarius. And congratulations to Zayanta Coleman. Zayanta recorded over 500 points during the school year at Magnolia Middle School as an accelerated reader. Congratulations, Zayanta, and never stop reading. So if you have a birthday, an anniversary, or you would just like to give someone a shout out, send us your email to office at frcfc.org. And for birthdays and anniversaries, make sure to list the first and last name as well as the date. These have been your weekly announcements, and we ask you to keep all announcements in mind and be reminded that Freedom Rock Cathedral is locally committed and globally commissioned. Hello, hello, hello. This is Bishop Hedgeman. I'm so thankful. I am. I consider it a thankful to be alive. I consider it a thankful to be leading God's people. I consider it a, consider it a thankful to have your attention right now. Listen, I thank you for tuning in because this morning's message is a very important message. It concludes our final piece to Mental Health Month, and it is also a key component to our Be Heal series. Only thing is that I'm not the messenger. I'm so thankful my wife, First Lady Michelle, is ministering a powerful word that I believe everyone needs to hear. Tune in, and I'll be back in just a moment. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Y'all know that little meme that they have on Instagram and all of that out there in social media world. Y'all know that woman and she be like, surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I stand and humbly stand before you all this morning um, instead of our bishop. Bishop is actually on assignment. So if you will, just lift him up this morning. He'll be in... Um, Dothan, Alabama. He was supposed to be here this morning. Um, I'm excuse me. He was supposed to be in Montgomery this morning, but the pilot said that it was too cloudy uh, for them to take flight this morning. So just keep him in your prayers. He was on dual assignment this morning, um, and he's in Dothan, Alabama as we speak. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. If you will, I want to just take a few minutes, and can we just worship God real quick? Hallelujah. I want to thank Minister Deanna Fox for setting the atmosphere. Thank the choir for setting the atmosphere for what God is going to say this morning. Hallelujah. We give honor to the angel of this house and that of Bishop LeBaron Hedgeman. Hallelujah. Intercessors, I'm going to need all of your agreement on this morning. Hallelujah. To my MIT affiliates, thank you for your agreement on today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, I think we can lift up a little bit better than that. God is going to speak prophetically to you this morning. He's going to give you some instructions on today. He's going to provide you some insight. So if you were here, I really, really, really want you to just thank God this morning for what he's about to say to you. There are battles coming. There are battles coming. 
And for you to be standing in the house of God today is a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift it up right there. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. You're so worthy, God. Hallelujah. You woke us up this morning, dear Master, and we thank God. We thank you this morning, Father, for your atmosphere of peace. And I thank you this morning, God, that understanding will be loosed in this house. Clarity will be provided to some. And I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of wisdom will move throughout this place. God, I thank you that you are about to provide some insight on how to handle the battles that are to come. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. But Lord, we thank you that you have given us insight into the scriptures on how to maneuver through times of difficulty. God, we give you glory, and I thank you, Lord, that as I begin to teach your word, God, that your Holy Spirit remains on me from the time I begin until the time I end. Anoint me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, God. Allow your word of knowledge to flow, hallelujah, like never before. I am your humble servant, God, and I give you all the praise and all the glory, hallelujah, for what you're about to do in this house. I give you praise, God, for the fetters you are about to destroy. I give you praise, God, for those who you are about to loose. I thank you, Lord, that in this atmosphere, captives are about to be set free. I thank you, Lord, that as a result of this word, hallelujah, that minds will be renewed. It is in your precious son, Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have on today a few visitors, and we want to make sure that we welcome our virtual audience. Freedom, can we give our virtual audience a hand clap and let them know that we appreciate them? Amen. But in the house on today, we're just going to recognize a few of our guests, our first timers, Hyman Merle. I believe I'm saying that right. Hyman Merle, would you just wave your hand? We don't want you to say anything. Amen. God bless you. Amen. He was invited by a friend. He lives here on David Street, and we thank God for you worshiping with us on today. Amen. Hallelujah. We have Trinity Bester. Trinity, can you wave? Hey, Trinity. It's her very first time. She's from Preston. And she was invited by Elizabeth Bryan. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Hallelujah. We thank God for you all choosing freedom on today. I know y'all probably wanted to hear a good hoop and a good holler, but I ain't that one. I can teach show sure enough, and I can exhort, but I ain't got a, uh, I don't have all that for you today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want to thank Glass for being here. Thank you, Glass. He wanted to hear Bishop. Y'all give Glass a hand. <laughs> but he said he's going to stay to hear me out a little bit. All right, God. <laughs> God be the glory. Amen. Come on, let's go on to the Word so we can get out of here. I ain't going to be like Bishop. Y'all know Bishop talk a long time. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Amen. All right, let's go to the Word in Ephesians. I believe they said that we're having some technical difficulties. Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm kind of real interactive, y'all. I'm, I'm really different. Um, as far as my teaching and preaching is concerned, I'm, I'm kind of interactive with you all. I, I kind of just talked through some things, but I just wanted to give you some insight. As I was in prayer, um, God began to speak some things to me as, in, as in what it was important for you to hear on today. He woke me up at 3 o'clock this morning, and he began to speak some things to me again. And um, I had another message <laughs> that I had already had prepared for on times when Bishop will call, but um, God changed the message, so I hope that it blesses you all like it has blessed me this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to start out in verse 10, and we're going to read down through verse 18, and I'm going to read pretty quickly here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on a breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints amen you may take your seats amen god's word is blessed amen truly it is an honor to stand before you on today I know that we have been hearing a message here on being healed and we understand that God's word is being delivered to us in an hour and a time where it seems like all chaos and all war and all rumors of wars is taking place but God wants to bring into your hearing this morning on how to handle these things on how to move forward when battles come battles are coming and so I want you to this morning just kind of put on your spiritual ear because we're going to kind of dive into some spiritual warfare this morning. But I kind of want to provide to you what God has given to me for you for when the battle comes. This is a very critical word. It's a very critical hour for the body of Christ. Here in the text in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul was talking to the church and the church was faced with many challenges and staying unified. And they was having a hard time staying separate from their culture. Paul's letter encourages the church to remain united in Christ and to live holy, pure, and Christ-inspired lives. So you say to yourself, first lady, what does all that mean? What are, what are you talking about here? Why are you wanting to talk about this in a Be Healed series? Well, when Bishop was speaking, he began to declare that battles were coming. Anytime that the Lord declares something to you in an atmosphere as such, and he says that battles are coming, that means that you must be prepared. You must prepare yourself for what's ahead. So when you're listening to the word and when you're listening to Bishop teach, or you're listening to any other minister preach or teach, I want you to begin to understand something. We need you to begin to turn on your ears and go into a deeper place into the spirit to where you can really receive what Christ is saying to the church. And I want to ask you a few questions here. Are you having difficulty remaining separate from the culture? Think about that for a second. Are you having difficulty remaining separate from the culture? What do I mean when I say culture? What am I saying? Things that affect us as people of God. Things that are coming against the church. Things that are coming against us as believers. Things that are coming against us in these last and final days. Things that are causing division amongst the saints. Things that are causing things to happen that we did not forthcom see forthcoming. Amen? So think about that for a second. Are you having difficulty remaining separate from the culture? Do you come to church on Sunday and Wednesday, but you live a total different life during the week? Remaining separate from culture. Now, I want to talk to some people here this morning because I remember when I first got saved, right? You know, you give your hand and you tell them you want to rededicate your life. But I know it's some people in here that are sitting here and you remember the day you got saved, but you did not know what was coming forward after that. But all you knew was to do what they had told you to do in the church or what you had seen that was modeled before you, right? Well, see, what happens is we never get the true divine instruction on what it really means to come into the knowledge of Christ. So when we actually give our lives to the Lord, it actually seems like it's going to be some kind of trouble coming our way. It seems like, 
you know, what have I done? As soon as you get back home and you get from amongst the saints, the enemy comes to you like a flood and says, well, you think you say, you think you say, you think you're going to leave the club? You think you're going to leave hanging out with your buddies? You think you're going to quit smoking? You think you're going to quit drinking? And the enemy comes in like a flood and says, thing. you're going to quit cussing all of a sudden? Well, listen, I know there's some young saints in here, but I want to tell you something. It's a work. It takes, it's a work in progress. You don't have to flip your life over all in one concept, all in one night. Amen. So I want some believers in here and I'm building right here because I want some understanding to flow into some young believers. This is what I want you to understand here. I want you to understand that where you are headed and the times that you're living in now are totally different than what we were living in 20 years ago, than what we were living in 10 years ago. But I want you to hear the voice of the Lord today. You might be saying to yourself, I just got saved, but I want you to understand some battles are coming. And you still have to remain and understand what does that mean as according to my salvation. So I don't want you to think that just because you are a new convert, or you are someone who just came to the Lord that we don't need your agreement. Yes, we need your agreement in this hour because we are in spiritual warfare. There are angels and demons right now in this room warring on our behalf that are keeping us safe. Hallelujah. We can't see them, but we are in spiritual warfare. The Lord said battles are coming. And we must be prepared, people of God. So I wanted to talk to the young saints this morning and let you know that you are on track. You are on task. Because sometimes when you come to Christ, you may think that you don't have it all together, but it's all right. Take your time. Learn the culture of the church. So see, when Paul was talking here in Ephesians, there was a time where he said there's a, a difference that there needs to be in the church versus it needs to be seen in the world. There's a difference in the culture. There's a difference in what he was saying, the mindset. So I ask you again, are you having difficulty remaining separate from the culture? And if you are, it's okay. Because today I'm going to give you some solutions to that on how to handle that. Are you powerful spiritually but burned out mentally? Think about that. Gifts and callings are given without repentance. That's how you can see someone that's on the verge of a mental breakdown, but they can get up and operate and do things in the Lord in their gift. Because gifts and callings are given without repentance. I would always question myself. Now, I know, and I know some preachers from back home. I'm saying, now I know he be cussing like a sailor during the week. I'll be around him. I work with him. And then on Sunday morning, he get up and preach a storm through the church. And I wondered in my young life, in my young conversion, how in the world does that happen? And I had someone explain to me that, that the gifts and callings are given without repentance. So no matter what you are facing, you still have to realize, number one, that you're gifted. You have to understand that you're gifted. And when you're gifted, you're going to stand out in the culture. You're going to stand separate in the culture. So are you powerful spiritually but burned out mentally? I know this is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're wrapping up the month of May. But it seems like they gave one month on mental health, but daily it's a fight mentally. It seems like we ought to have a mental health day in every month in the times that we're in and the times that we're facing. But let's see, since we're talking about Paul and, and Paul was talking to the church and he was saying that there's a separation from the culture and he wanted it to remain. So let's see what's happening in our culture. I'm just gonna read some statistics to you and I want you to kind of think about them for a second. The World Health Organization states more than 700,000 people die by suicide every year, which is one person every 40 seconds. In fact, 77% of suicides occurred in low and middle income countries. The National Institute of Health worldwide estimates that hypertension affects approximately 
one billion people, resulting in 7.1 million attributed deaths that are premature. Now, many of you can ask yourself, and you can say, I have high blood pressure. I'm challenged with high blood pressure. And one thing I want to teach you is the difference in what I was taught one time by Miss Penny. When I would, I would claim something, I'd be like, you know, we're talking about be healed and we're talking about healing. And a lot of times we claim things, right? We, we actually take on the persona of what it is. But Miss Penny taught me, she said, First Lady, uh-uh, you don't say I have. What you say is I'm challenged with. So what I want you all to begin to understand right here is when we're dealing with spiritual warfare and we're dealing with how to work and how to maneuver throughout the culture and how to make sure that our church culture remains different from the culture of the world, that you have to be equipped. You have to be equipped. It is vital, y'all, in these last days that we be equipped. It's okay to have fun, but we have to be separate. It's okay to enjoy some of the things and leisures of this world, but we have to be separate. It is intensely emergent that you apply that within your knowledge now because people are leaving here every day. They said that over 77% of suicides occurred in low and middle income countries. So you say, why are you throwing all this, this health stuff out here? It's mental health money. And when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, one of the greatest places where you have to go to battle that is in your mind. But how many of you know that African Americans are more likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population? And there are several factors that contribute to this. And I'm going to teach in just a minute, but I want y'all to hear these things that I came across, which was very alarming to me. Poverty. Black people living in poverty are twice as likely to report serious psychological distress than those who are more than twice as wealthy. Violence. Black people are more likely to be the victims of a violent crime, which can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. Over 25% of black youth who have experienced violence are at high risk for PTSD. This is one where I want to pause on, intergenerational trauma. How many of you have heard that before? Intergenerational trauma. Trauma has been scientifically proven that it can be passed down through genes, making descendants of people who have experienced oppression and violence vulnerable in mental health conditions. Intergenerational trauma. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that Great-grandmama grew up in a house of dysfunction. Grandmama grew up in a house of dysfunction. Mama grew up in a house of dysfunction. And now I'm in the house with my children of dysfunction. We are suffering at the hands of all of these fiery darts where people are constantly being traumatized because of our lack thereof in the spirit. We have to be reminded that our God-given authority rests upon our lives. It's okay to do the things that we think or we, we contribute as okay in the world. But listen, people of God, we have got to understand something. God is not going to just bring you a healing out of nowhere. There's a standard that you have to have that God requires of you. There's an obedience that we must maintain in this life so that healing can reach you. How many of you know that you have seen so many people suffer? I know I have in the medical field where you're looking at them and they are suffering due to the lack of non-compliance. Just a rebellious fool out here doing what they want to do. You got high blood pressure, but you're still adding salt to your food. That's a mental health disorder. That means you have no self-control. You had a heart attack and the doctor told you to lay off of fried food, but you're still pulling up at Popeye's. So these are things that God wants us to understand that we have to be called in this hour to a new understanding as to what God is saying about spiritual warfare. We might think that these things are natural, right? 
we might think that these are some natural concepts. We might say, you know, these are some natural things that we go through. These are things that we hear all the time and we just blow them off. But listen, trauma shows up in all different types of ways. And there are so many ways that we need to make sure that we're prepared for because battles produce trauma. We are traumatized a lot of times through the battles that we face. We might have went through a trial or a tribulation in the times past, and then all of a sudden, something triggers you, and you don't even know why. You don't even understand what happened. Why did this happen? Why did this come forth? Why did this manifest? I'm living right for God. I'm, I'm paying my tithes. I'm giving my offerings, but yet and still, I'm still struggling. I'm still in a fight. I'm still battling. Well, God wants to remind you today that you got to exercise your God-given authority in making sure that you know how to stand. The Bible says to stand, therefore. So when we're looking at the last part of that was stigma. African Americans may feel less comfortable talking to friends, family, and community members about their health more so than other cultures. So now, this is what I want to do. I want to divert back to Ephesians 6, but I want to read it in the Message Bible. And that about wraps it up. God is strong. He wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you. Well-made weapons weapons of the best materials and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way this is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours this is for keeps a life a death fight to finish against the devil and all of his angels be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, all but the shouting, you will still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You will need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. I'm going to read that again. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind and no one drops out. Now, when we're talking about weapons, and if you was looking for a subject today, it was choose your weapon. So I want you to right now look at your neighbor and just tell them choose your weapon and choose your weapon wisely. Now, we have to choose our weapons, and we must be intentional on how we prepare for these battles. Now, you may say, what kind of battles? What do you mean? Well, we can't see as far as that is concerned, but the thing that we are required to do is to be prepared. You can't fight when you are sick. You can't defend when you are overwhelmed. You can't stand when you're tired. You can't think clearly when you're distracted from the things of this culture. So what type of weapons am I speaking of? Choose your weapon. The first weapon I want to teach you about in this word is meditation. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to read the Message Bible, verse 3 through 6. The world is unprincipled. Is dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. 
never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of, obedi of obedience into maturity. So you say, choose my weapon. So which weapon before these battles come that we need to be prepared for that's what's ahead? The first one is meditation. So if you will, you can write that down, meditation. And these are going to be some tools and some weapons for you when you go forth. And some of you may not understand all of it right now, but you will in the near future. Meditation, a position of stay for the mind to be still and focus on God. Meditation, a position of stay for the mind to be still and focus on God. When was the last time you sat still and just focused on God? There are so many distractions that we are living amongst, even in our own homes. When we try to make time for God, we get distracted. But I want you to understand something. In the times coming, the times of what God has shown us for what's ahead, you're going to have to learn how to meditate because it's going to help you keep your mind at peace. And we think that we have seen a lot of mental health issues and a lot of distractions through mental health oppositions, but we hadn't seen anything like what's to come. So God is preparing you today to make sure that you understand what he's calling and requiring of you in this hour through choosing your weapons. So meditation, we have to police and arrest thoughts. When you don't arrest your thoughts, your imagination rises up against what God said. So think about those people that said in the beginning, over 700,000 people commit suicide. What happened to them? They didn't arrest those thoughts. They didn't arrest that imagination that rose up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we have to understand here that there is an importance of arresting thoughts. Meditation will keep your mind focused. Why else is meditation important? Meditation is an enemy to worry. Meditation will help you defeat worry. If you are a worrier, try meditation. I promise you, if you try meditation, it will help you and it will defeat worry. So, God wants to speak to you every day so you don't lose focus. This is what meditation does. It helps God speak to you. When was the last time when you heard God's voice? When you truly sat still in his presence and just heard his still voice? When was the last time you tried to be still and hear God's voice? If you have not done that in a while, for what's ahead, you need to be prepared and make sure that you're being still. Because if not, you won't survive in this next that's to come towards the body of Christ. What we're seeing, what we're facing is different. It's not going to be what we think it is. We won't see this coming. But I want you to understand something. God is preparing you today with the word. And he's helping you understand how to go to battle. So if you choose these weapons wisely and you submit to what God is saying to you, you will be safe as unto what's to come. Now, God says 
Meditation helps you to focus. So what comes out of it? Peace, strength that lasts. How many of you need some strength that just lasts? You know, you feel good one day, then the next day you're tired. Then you wake up and you go for another couple of days and then you're tired. So, but how many of you can use some strength that lasts? You know what else meditation does? It helps you trust God. It helps you to trust God. When you get still and you listen to God and you meditate and you tune out everything that's distracting you, you turn off the TV, you turn your phone on, do not disturb, and you sit and you listen, God says, you know what? I can trust that person. I can talk to them. I can share a word with them because they are still. They paused. They invited me into their day. They asked me in my presence to come and be with them. I'm telling you about the benefits of meditation. You got to choose your weapon. And I hope that you are hearing me this morning. But what else does the Bible say? In Isaiah 26, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose what? Mind is stayed on thee. Why? We often stop right there. But when you finish that text, it says, Because he trusted in thee. He trusted in you. If you provide meditation and you choose meditation, for one of your weapons, for the battles that are to come, God is going to begin to trust you. He's going to begin to speak to you. He's going to begin to bring and provide healing. He's going to increase you in your finances. He's going to increase you in wisdom. He's going to increase you in wealth. He's going to increase you with unexpected income. He's going to increase you with abundance. He's going to bring the overflow into your life like never before. But the principle that you have to maintain is meditation. Sometimes we often get caught up in the grind. We think that making money and doing this and doing that and going forward and, and making this happen and making it happen, I got to make it happen, I got to make it happen. I I got to make it happen. I even heard somebody say, I could sleep when I'm dead. But I'm looking at this person like, what is wrong with you? God said we owe him a rested body. So sometimes we need to get still. We need to listen to what God is saying. Because the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal. So we have to hear things sometimes without a hoop and a oh. Sometimes God has to get things to you through a message to where you can understand for what's ahead and you need some instructions. So meditation. Somebody say meditation. How can I find time to meditate? In Psalm 63 and 6, David said, I found time in the night watches. Sometimes you have to lose sleep. Sometimes you have to get up earlier than normal. And you have to talk to God in those quiet hours of the morning. Sometimes you have to stay up a little late and burn the night oil. Sometimes you have to move things out of your way. But I'm telling you for what's ahead and the battles that's to come. And I'm not talking about as far as a physical battle. We're talking about a spiritual war that's going on that's taking place is people have scales over their eyes. They can't see what God is seeing because they won't get still, they won't meditate, and they won't allow God to trust them enough to see or say what is coming. So he can show you, but you got to understand something, you guys. Meditation is key. Purposes of meditation. What does meditation do? Meditation paces. It slows things down. It filters. It helps you capture the necessaries. It alters. It changes your approach. It tunes. It causes you to hear. It strengthens. What does it strengthen? Your earthen vessel. Biblical episodes of meditation are proven. 
And I'm going to close right here. Your next weapon is prayer. Now, I don't want you to lie in a sanctuary. But I know if God did a survey throughout this whole body right now. Some of you didn't pray this morning before you even came to the house of God. Some of you can't even remember when the last time you sat still and meditated and prayed. But you wonder why the enemy is wreaking havoc in your life. You wonder why these mental anguishes are constantly tormenting you. We have to be focused and we have to be ready. Meditation is proven. Prayer is proven. Prayer is your weapon. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through verse 9 says, and I'm reading from the message version, and I'm closing right here. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything will be coming together for the good. It will come and settle you down. How many of you can use some settling down right now? It will come and settle you down. This is what the power of prayer does. This is the weapon of prayer. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry from the center of your life. Summing it all up, I'd say, you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, and gracious. The best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. But put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that. And God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. We have to choose our weapons wisely so that we can continue to be healed, so that we can continue to receive that I am the healed of the Lord, so that we can continue to hear and receive acts of grace. These are the things that are echoing in our house. But God brought you all the way here today to remind you the importance of choosing your weapons, meditation, and prayer. Think about it. You have to slow your minds down. There are so many of you in here right now, and I can see through the eye of the Spirit, where your mind is running 90 to nothing. Some of you are even thinking about what you already finna eat after service or what you finna do or what you got to do tomorrow. Some of you are already saying to yourself, I got to go home and wash clothes. I got to go home and put this up. I got to go home and get this ready for the week. See how the enemy will distract you? But this is what it means when he says choose your weapons for the battles to come. Meditation. So we're going to practice. So if you haven't meditated in a while, you're about to meditate now. So close your eyes and tell your mind to calm down because you got to be prepared for battle. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. So take a deep breath. And let's go on this journey of meditation right here. God has brought you to a still place in this hour so that you can be healed. Not just getting a burst of what it feels like, but God truly indeed wants to heal your body. You can't fight when you're sick. You can't stand when you're weak. Slow your mind down. Tell the devil to get behind me, Satan. And speak the word over your life. God has given you a God-given authority. He went down into the pits of hell and he took the keys so that you can be ordained in your God-given authority. What is my God-given authority? It is to be able to speak and declare life. To those of you who are wrestling with depression, it is to say, I will live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. For those of you who need encouragement, it is to say, I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. For those of you who are weak, you have to remind yourself that the scripture says, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. My God, God is amazing, isn't he? That even in spite of our trauma, even in spite of generational curses, we serve a God who is yet a healer. I pray you receive that word and I pray you're willing to do the work to stay in this place of healing. Thank you, First Lady Michelle, for ministering to us in such a powerful way. I pray this week is an incredible week for you. I pray God's going to do something that calls for you to know that you have his favor. Write us. Let us know. Share your testimonies on how this word and this ministry is blessing you. Until next time, you be blessed.